Hello all, welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be exploring the usage of an outdated Cobalt Strike 4.0. So a quick context before we begin. In year 2020, Cobalt Strike, a very popular command and control C2 framework was leaked online and since then, many people have been using it and exploiting it, especially in the cyber criminal space. Cobalt Strike is a commercial exploitation tool that is pretty expensive. It is very different from your typical remote access red tools as it contains functionalities that are geared towards hacking an entire organization Windows Active Directory network instead of focusing just on an individual. Fortra, the owner of Cobalt Strike, Microsoft and Health ISAC have been partnering together to take down all the cracked Cobalt Strike versions available online. It is quite hard to find it online publicly anymore. Fortunately or unfortunately, I do have a Cobalt Strike with me that I have downloaded 5 years ago, so I will not be talking too much about what Cobalt Strike is and all the introductory stuff. If you are interested, a quick Google search on Cobalt Strike will get you all the information you need. Without further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, a Windows Defender exclusion has been created to ensure that the Cobalt Strike payload can run smoothly as we explore the usage of Cobalt Strike. Since this has been leaked online and it has been 5 years already, as well as being an extremely outdated version, Cobalt Strike has been heavily signatured. If this video receives a good amount of views and likes, I might create a second part to showcase how you can bypass Windows Defender with it. Alright, let's run the Cobalt Strike server which is called a team server. We will need to supply it with the IP address of the server hosting it and also a password. The password will be required for you or the operators of the assessment to connect to the Cobalt Strike C2. Cobalt Strike is meant to serve multiple operators working on a same project. So it means that multiple users can connect to the same Cobalt Strike server and hack on a same target. Once that is up, we can start the Cobalt Strike client with start.sh, which will connect to the Cobalt Strike server. Here, you will need to supply the password. You can run the Cobalt Strike client on a separate machine as well. This is a quick diagram to show how it works on a high level. You can have, for example, three different operators connected to the same Cobalt Strike C2 team server and work together to exploit the victim who is connected to the Cobalt Strike C2. The Cobalt Strike has a start.bat connector for Windows computer as well. You will need Java installed. Alright, so this is the interface of Cobalt Strike, a ton of functionalities to explore. Let's showcase and explore a few in this video. First, we will need to set up a listener. A listener allows payload generation and it creates a network socket for your victim to connect onto. We will use the most common HTTPS beacon listener. We will need to add a callback host and in this case, this will be the team server IP address since we are not running it behind a redirector. With this, we will be able to generate a payload that will connect to this listener. There are many options and choices for payload generation. We will stick with the simplest one, to generate an EXE executable file. Once that is safe, we will need to host the file on a web server so that the file can be downloaded remotely. In reality, you will need to be creative with the payload delivery to entice your victim to click on it and your payload should not be an exe file. We can use Cobalt Strike host file feature to do it. We can look at the web logs under view to see if our payload has been downloaded. Now let's hop over back to our Windows machine and execute the payload. We can download the payload with PowerShell or simply use a browser. Once the payload beacon.exe has been downloaded, execute it by double clicking on it.
and back to our cobalt strike C2, we can see that there is a callback. We now have a beacon running from the Windows computer. Let's interact with it. By default, cobalt strike beacon does not establish a persistent connection unlike Metasploit Metabrader. The beacon will call back to the server to fetch commands or send results at a certain interval which is 60 seconds by default. Instead of waiting 60 seconds for each of our commands to be executed, we can configure the callback to be quicker. Let's change the callback to just 1 second instead. We can see what are some of the commands supported by Cobalt Strike over here. We will not be going through all of it, but only the more useful ones. One of which is the file browser. With the file browser, you can easily browse around your victim computer with a nice user interface shown over here. You can download and upload files which is very convenient. Next up will be the screenshot functionality. Let's fire up Google Chrome on the victim machine and see if we can take a screenshot remotely of it from the Cobalt Strike C2. In order to take a screenshot, you will need to specify a process to take the screenshot from. We can view the running processes on the victim machine with process list and find Chrome from it. Here, this should take a screenshot of your victim Google Chrome process. We can also do keylogging with Cobalt Strike. For example, we can keylog the Google Chrome process to lock the keystrokes when the victim types into Google Chrome browser. Let's pretend to log into Facebook. We can now stop the key logging by listing the running jobs and then do a job queue of the key logging job ID. The remote desktop VNC is a bit wacky and not really functional, but oh well. If you have command execution over your victim like this, it is technically not difficult to set up a remote desktop GUI access to your victim. You can probably install something like Team Viewer or any desk on your victim. Alright guys, this is it to this video. I have barely scratched the surface of Cobalt Strike. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you are interested in learning about hacking Windows Active Directory and have a feel of how it looks like, there is a playlist available on my YouTube channel over here. It has 4 episodes which showcases the common scenarios you might encounter and what kind of tools you can use to test a Windows Domain Active Directory environment. Here is a quick shout out to everyone who have donated to my channel so far. Thank you and I really appreciate it a lot. Thanks for watching and please help to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It will really help out the channel a lot. It is very much appreciated and I will see you all soon in the next one. Bye.